Hi there, good people of the earth. This is your loving, caring YouTube content creator, Attila Yeshilada. It is the twilight zone in Turkey, Friday, 5 a.m. And today I'm going to talk about a topic that's worthy of a twilight zone episode, which is Turkey has entered stagflation, a very rare and unique condition that a nation can find itself in, extremely painful. This video essentially consists of five small parts. A, I am going to sort of tweak the uh, definition of stagflation to make it consistent with the conditions of developing nations and Turkey. Two, I'm going to present empirical evidence that Turkey is indeed in stagflation. Three, I'm going to answer the question of how long will this painful episode last? But before I can answer that question, I need to take a look at the political situation because, you know, in Turkey, economic outcomes always depend on political choices and in specific President Erdogan's political choices. This is why I need to explain to you that Erdogan needs to be reelected he is currently a lame duck and he needs early elections to gain the right to stand for election a third term. And finally, of course, uh, that will all lead us to the $64,000 question or $500,000 given inflation in the United States of when Turkey is going to exit stagflation. <laughs> now, I'm not in my usual jovial mood because I just finished recording a 36 minutes video just about the subject which because I don't know how to use the screen sharing function in Zoom has turned out to be just people looking at a blank page. I hope I don't repeat this experience or I'll hang myself and I shall live stream it uh, to get my last 15 minutes of fame under the sunlight. Okay, stagflation. We all know what stagflation is. I mean, even if you're not an economist, if inflation is rising while income or output is declining, we are in stagflation, which is fine. Uh, it's broadly true, but there are nuances, uh, several nuances. A, most developing nations barely enter recessions. The typical business cycle so manifest in developed nations doesn't really materialize that. It's a young economy, millions of people joining the workforce every year, so demand for new housing, consumer durables, autos, etc. The economy finds a way to grow. Or it, it, it piggy banks on a new technology that was invented in the West, adopts it immediately, and you get this growth spur. So as far as the growth leg of stagflation goes, for a country like Turkey, the uh, relevant uh, definition is significant slack in output. In Turkey, I consider the non-inflationary growth rate at 3% per annum. So for Turkey, given 1% or so population growth, any growth less than 1.5% or so ought to be construed as a recession or a growth recession. Two, inflation. The problem there is uh, no one believes in the data published by Turkey's official statistics agency, Turkstat, which always show inflation lower than it actually is. And there is a good reason for that, because in Turkey, all wages, salaries, and pensions are indexed to past inflation, and lower Turkstat shows CPI, the less the budget pays out. <laughs> it's really that simple and very sinister. So instead of Turkstat inflation data, which shows declining inflation, I am going to consider new monthly surveys by the Central Bank of Turkey, which questions canvases households and the private sector as to what they think inflation is going to be in the next 12 months. If these are rising, to me, then inflation is rising and Turkey is in stagflation. Let's look at 
data and this is where the share function comes here we go okay i think i'm screen sharing now successfully let's see if this works yeah i gotta push this up and you gotta bear with me okay the first piece of data i'm showing is official gdp growth pertaining to second quarter um the red line is year on year which you see annual output declining significantly and the gray bars are q on q as you see in the second quarter of uh 2024 turkish economy barely squeaked out 0.1 percent growth which is flat um, and the entire growth came from inventory run down so essentially uh both consumption and production were down i'm sure consumption was much slower vis-a-vis -vis the previous quarter and production was down to me even that is a fairly stretch of imagination and turkish economy has declined in the second quarter because all forecasts uh, indicated a sequential decline of 0.5 to 0.7 Let's move on to the summer months, simply because, you know, almost the third quarter is done. And if after a decline in economic output, we get another decline in the second quarter in a row, then we would have a recession. This is the economic confidence index that's also published monthly by Turkstat. It's a very convenient tool to measure where Turkish economy is heading because it combines consumer confidence index, which is a demand side measure, with several supply side measures, PMIs actually. Look at the thick red line. Over the summer months, economic confidence index has declined substantially, which provides further evidence uh, for my hypothesis that at, as we speak, Turkish economy is in stagflation. Sorry. Of course, another way to look at GDP growth is the momentum of loans, which is the first derivative of loan growth, which has a very high correlation with next quarter's GDP in Turkey. Once again, please focus on the red line, total credits, see how fast they have been declining throughout the second and third quarter. Moreover, look. let's look at the rate Currently, loan growth is around 25% per annum. Remembering that as of July, Turkey's CPI was 51% and PPI, also, I'm sorry, WPI, wholesale price index, was at 45 or so. The real loan stock is declining, is shrinking very substantially. That too is a measure of uh, recession. Now, this is in Turkish, but I really like it because it combines the blue line, which is the non-financial sector PMI, with the red line, which is the consumer price, I'm sorry, consumer confidence index. And look at what happened to both measures over the summer months. The non-financial sector Confidence index sectoral PMI has declined sharply to levels not seen in the last five years, if my memory serves me right. And uh, consumer confidence index has stabilized at a very low level, which is consistent uh, with previous slowdowns. Now, inflation, and that's the tricky part, as I have mentioned at the beginning of this broadcast, instead of official data published by Turkstat, which not only I, but no one in Turkey finds credible, I judge inflationary conditions by the sectoral inflation expectations survey published by the Central Bank of Turkey. There are three lines here. Ignore the red line. It's not important. Central Bank asks the households or a sample of households and firms what they think inflation is or will be in the next 12 months. Now, for the firms, 
inflation is very high and only declining marginally. Statistically speaking, we can say the private sector thinks, the business sector thinks inflation is stuck at a very high level. If you look at consumers, the households, which wake up 60% of the spending in the economy, in the next 12 months, inflation will be increasing. So to me, that is the definition of stagflation. Let me just, where am I? Oh, here we go. Okay, let's stop sharing. Man, that was, <laughs> for me, that was really hard. So I think I've proven, you know, more or less, at least uh, in the terms that the men and women on the street would speak of it, that Turkey is in a stagflation. The question is, how long will it last? I can assure you that under foreseeable conditions, it will last through this year, simply because there is no new income injection into the economy and the private sector has exhausted its spending power. <laughs> Let me give you an example. In August, according to official data, CPI was roughly 2.5%. But those, the 50% of the workforce who draws a wage at the minimum wage or very close to it, didn't get a monthly pay raise. Turkey has 16 million retirees. They got a pay raise at the end of June. But of course, in July, they immediately lost 2.5% of it to inflation. And this will accelerate and get worse. In the remainder of the year, each month, inflation would steal some amount of purchasing power out of fixed incomes. Most of Turkey, both the workforce, the retirees, are on fixed incomes. So as the year advances, their spending power would decrease. Moreover, monetary policy is tight, so businesses are on a now mood to borrow and invest into new factories, etc. That too is a net deduction from income. Finally, external sector is going to be roughly in balance. That is, we're not going to get much of an income contribution or demand contribution to the economy in the fourth quarter. In third quarter, we might get a slight income contribution because tourism is so buoyant this year. But in the fourth quarter, tourists will be gone and incomes will decline again. Fiscal policy will still add some income to the economy, but its contribution is small because the share of the budget in Turkey vis-a-vis -vis OECD countries is very small. And moreover, we're in the middle of an austerity program orchestrated by economies on Mehmet Şimşek, who, despite uh, his inability to pass new tax passages, tax legislation has managed to squeeze out more income, more tax revenue from the economy. How? Broaden the Turkish IRS, the revenue service. Everyone has been audited day and night. And those who in the past have been fairly remiss or tardy about tax payments are now scurrying to pay as soon as possible before they get penalties. So, for the third and fourth quarter, by practical definitions, Turkey will be in stagflation. How about 2025? Will Turkey get out of its stagflation? Now, that depends on Mr. Erdogan. In Turkey, Erdogan is the only man who has decision-making power. The buck stops there. It was his idea to start an austerity program by appoint appointing Mehmet Şimşek in the June of 2023. He can give it up anytime he wants to. There is no one to stop him. Does he have any incentive to stop or back off from the austerity program? Yes and no, and that's the tricky point of this video. Since the 31st of March local elections, which Erdogan and FJP lost badly, I mean, they lost their shirt. 75% of the population now lives in municipalities where the mayor is from the main opposition party, CHP, or smaller opposition parties. Since then, I have reviewed 12 polls, roughly a dozen, 
which unanimously tell me that AKP is now the second party in the country behind CHP. AKP has been in power for 22 years, and this is the first time that happens. Now, I know what you're going to tell me. In particular, those who are fascinated by American presidential elections, you know that polls at this stage of the election race are just wildly inaccurate. Polls in general have not been done doing a good job in terms of predicting election outcomes, granted. But usually some polls show results that move in the opposite, opposite direction of the majority of polls. I have never seen a situation in my 20 years of tracking poll data where all the pollsters, including those who are pro-AKP, stating that AKP is now behind CHP. There are also uh, pop approval rating polls for party leaders and Erdogan. Erdogan is lagging badly behind the main opposition leader, Ozgur Özel, and CHP's two popular mayors, Mr. Ekrem Momol of Istanbul and Mr. Mansur Yavaş of Ankara. So Erdogan is under tremendous pop uh, popular pressure to reverse this austerity program and once again to spend as the generous father he is for his extended family. But then again, Turkey's next scheduled elections is not until 2028. And these austerity programs, if diligently pursued, usually generate results within two years. By results, I mean lowering inflation to whatever the target is. In Turkey, it's 5%. But even 10% would be considered a significant achievement in combating inflation. The economy will slow down in the interim, perhaps even enter a recession as we are right now in. But at the end, uh, unburdened by the shackles of rising inflation, a young economy like Turkey will recover very rapidly. So one might think, hey, why should Erdogan care about public pressure? All he has to do is hold the line for another year or two, which will bring us to end of 2026, by which time he will have very low inflation, the public goodwill generated by that achievement, as well as having saved plenty of ammunition in the treasury to immediately spend on the people until 2028. It's not that simple. According to the constitution, this is Erdogan's last term. He's a lame duck. He cannot stand for election again, unless one of the two things happen. A, a constitutional amendment granting him another term or a new constitution. B, Turkish National Assembly, the parliament, calling early elections, in which case he gets automatically another term. Now, the constitutional path is closed. There is no mood in the public for a new constitution, and AKP and its ally MHP are like 40 votes short of legislating a new constitution. Even if they manage to get those extra 40 votes from the opposition, I don't know why the opposition would agree to it, they'll have to present the new constitution to a national referendum, which they're almost certain to lose because people are not going to go there to approve another term for Erdogan, but to tell him they are sick and tired of the austerity program. So the constitutional path to Erdogan's eligibility is dead. All he has to count on is early elections called by National Assembly. There too, AKP and MHP don't have to vote. None of the opposition parties except CHP want early elections. CHP, Mr. Ozgur Özel, has made it very clear that he shall vote for early elections, which are held at the latest by the first quarter of 2026 and not under any conditions after that. Now Erdogan and his sidekick Bahçeli meet from time to time and sources tell me or tell the press that they do want early elections but only when the economy is producing welfare, well-being, prosperity and they think Mr. Ozel is bluffing 
if Erdogan and Bahçeli call early elections, the opposition will have to oblige. Now, that's very shallow thinking, simply because what unites the opposition is their absolute hatred of Erdogan. Ozel telling his constituency that if they can stand the pain for two more years, they will forever get rid of Mr. Erdogan is a very potent weapon. Secondly, the most likely candidate of CHP for next presidential elections, Mr. Ekrem Mamoğlu, uh, has been convicted of insulting election officials, which carries an automatic ban from public office. So he's under political ban. He's appealing. Two days ago, he said he has received information that his appeal has been rejected and the verdict will be made soon public. Now, if that happens, if Ekrem Mamol is banned from politics, there is no way Ozel is going to cooperate with Mr. Erdogan about early elections. Now, he has a grudge. He has a very valid reason not to cooperate with Erdogan. His most popular candidate has just been eliminated by foul play. To make a long story short, Erdogan will eventually realize, probably by the turn of the year, that if he wants to be reelected, he needs to sit down with Özel and cut a deal. And that deal is either elections in the first quarter of 2026 or sometime later in 2026 in return for abandoning the austerity program, <clears throat> simply because CHP doesn't want austerity. His constituencies, the retirees, the working class are suffering tremendously under it. And if Ozel can persuade Erdogan to stop it and to increase minimum wage, pensions, salaries rapidly, this is a potent campaign tool because everyone knows that it was Ozel who forced Erdogan to abandon the austerity program. In this scenario, the austerity program is dead. We should no longer talk about stagflation or low inflation. Mr. Erdogan will be forced to raise salaries, wages, inject income into the economy, which will be good for output growth. We will get out of the stagflation, but we may be heading for hyperinflation. The second scenario regarding early elections is Erdogan really doubling down on the austerity program telling Mehmet Şimşek, squeeze inflation expectations out of the economy. Do whatever it takes. Which would amount to Mehmet Şimşek immediately cutting budget expenditures, raising new taxes, and the central bank being allowed to stay longer on the path of monetary tightening, which would really squeeze the economy. Finally, at the turn of the year, Mr. Erdogan will sign under minimum wage, pension, and civil servant salary increases no more than 20%. Since the end 2025 inflation target is roughly 15%, this means very little real increase in most of the incomes of the working population and the retirees. But in addition to adding very little to domestic demand, low-balling turn-of-the-year income increases has a signaling effect. You have tight monetary policy, central bank refusing to cut rates until inflation goes away, and the government telling people, look, I'm not going to increase your salaries or wages until we get rid of this inflation program uh, problem. I think then this inflation will become credible and we will see inflation expectations come crashing down. Turkey will, Turkish inflation will decelerate very rapidly through 2025. By third quarter or so, Turkish inflation will have declined to 20%. And moreover, since this was achieved not only by monetary policy, but by also less public spending, the treasurer will have ample funds for Mr. Erdogan to spend on his constituencies. By the end of the third quarter of 2025, he can start spending again. Yeah, it will be inflationary. But by then, inflation will be much lower. 
And in the next six months, it's not going to increase to a level that's going to really bother people. That is the viable re-election strategy and a potential path to victory. Of course, all of these assumes that my rationality is also Mr. Erdogan's rationality. One of the main problems, the elephant that's roaming or roaring in the middle of the room, trumpeting in the middle of the room, is that rationality cannot be standardized and it depends, you know, from it depends on the people. So Mr. Erdogan may not see it that way. In a sense, we have two options here. We're going to get out of the stagflation at the end of the year, but the expense of much higher inflation. Two, we're going to remain in stagflation throughout the rest of this year. And then we're going to move to a regular recession with falling prices and falling incomes, at least through the first three quarters of 2025. And then six months before the next elections, Mr. Erdogan will spend again. We have moderate increases in inflation and significant growth in GDP, which could suffice to bring another victory to Erdogan, though I doubt that will be enough. But that's the subject of another video. This has been long enough. I love your comments. A member of our community, I think, wrote the last time that, you know, I eagerly await your next video because it's like a thriller. It really is. Turkey is a fascinating country in this regard. So I hope you like this one and you share it, you subscribe uh, to help my audience grow and to help me propel higher in the YouTube algorithm. Live long and prosperous. Atilay Shla saying goodbye from Istanbul.